starting with uh the dusk vigil there's too much snow it's it's I, I get what it's going for but it even in daytime it can get really dark and hard to see in places the first it's a step it's a good tutorial for heaven's way of like okay we're in a new expansion things hit pretty hard they don't hit too hard but they hit enough to be like oh things are hitting hard again that i have to actually be careful and not wall to wall everything people do end up wall to wall walling anyway once they're more experienced but like oh man things took a step up in difficulty again uh first boss uh, the calm, the, when you get targeted for Rock of Ages, you get hit like three times in a row, and you just have to sit there and take it for a good ten seconds or plus, and it's really takes you out of the fight. Especially if you get it twice in a row, I've gotten that twice in a row, where half of the fight I'm just sitting there doing nothing, because I physically cannot do anything and that's kind of really annoying second boss gets uh a bit hectic in a in a good way just because there's all the ads that can be buffing him and he gets stronger as the fight goes on and I, I like that i do like that and all the aoe's going off i have to stay close to him for uh, and as i said the dungeon looks boring and kind of dark and i don't eh and then there's the outside portion that has like the the cold wind like uh uh snowcloak had snowcloak had it only in like little spots that were clearly marked uh dusk vigil has it like for an entire the entire outside area and it's really annoying but then you get to the final boss and the griffin is i do like the griffin that's a fun fight the wind jail gets so many people and it's what and it's fun to watch them get carried into the the jail over and over probably annoying for them because they don't understand it but when you know what you're doing that's a fun fight but of course it's just like hide behind the rock easy done so it's like it's it's a good tutorial for getting you to understand things are going to hurt a lot more but also eh. Low C. I like it more than Tam Terror, but I'd rather do like Holotolly, hard even. Some all I like, cause. Eh. Now thinking on it, the first. The Drake Spur fights are kind of annoying. The first boss is a tank and spank. Even when it was new, it was better to just tank and spank than deal with the ads. Second boss, the only ad you should deal with is the last song, the gr giant green one. And even that, people just ignore now. And it's not clearly, it's not like really well marked, which is, I can never remember, is in the second boss, is it red is stack and blue is spread or is it blue is stack and red is spread i think it's red is spread and blue is stack i i i i, I can never remember and also the path up to the second boss is really segmented and annoying in dumb ways the third the path up to the third boss is fine and tiaman is a good is a good fight i like i like that fight dealing with the comets is fun even if it does involve some downtime, once you n understand how they work and the timing of them. Chaos, Chaos Blast is also really cool and all that. So it's like, yeah. And so um, I, I do like the look of it. Even the inside the caves is interesting looking at least. So I'm going to say it's a low B. I'm going to put it above Praetor Praetorium, but it's not my favorite. The area, meanwhile, is a really fun dungeon all around. Like, I... I don't really have anything bad to say about the area, but I don't have anything all too great to say about it either, except for Nidhogg. Nidhogg is a fun fight. But other than Nidhogg being a fun fight, I don't really have much to say on it, so... I... 
gonna be like the shortest one so far. It's gonna, I'm not gonna say anything more than this for the entire run. So, or for the entire run, for the for yeah this analysis. I don't really have much. It looks great though. It also looks great. Yeah, they, they, there's another plus. It looks great in all the sections. So I'm gonna say it's like a high B. I'm gonna put it above Halatali, but below Arm Bale. The Vault. Pain of what happens aside, I like everything about this dungeon too. I'm gonna I'm at least put it in A. Cause the first boss is interesting and does some fun things and dodging around and dealing with new marker types. The the pools are fun. The second Grino is actually a really fun boss to deal with. Especially if everyone knows how to properly place the portals. Some of the segmenting for the pools is kind of weird. And like the, the weird hallway that's like the super long hallway with the guy throwing AoEs at you. You have to go just run down that whole hallway and just five enemies at once that don't even hit all that hard. It's, it's kind of weird. But the, all the bosses are really good. Cherubinet is actually a really, really good fight, I'd say. He's the first dungeon fight that's really like... Okay, we're in an expansion now. You should have learned a few things. Here's a lot to deal with. You have to deal with heavy AoE damage. You have to deal with the chains. You have to deal with the knights. You have to deal with AoE puddles. And there's also the add phase, which is kind of boring and pace breaking. But, you know, it's there. But it's also a clear delineation between phase one, where things are relatively easy, Phase 2 is the adds, and then Phase 3, he just starts th starts throwing the Kitchen Lalafell at you. And it's like, wow, things got a lot harder now. And so it, it's... I really like the Vault. The Vault is a good dungeon. I think I'm going to put it above all of the Realm Reborn dungeons, even, in the 8th slot. I like it that much. What happens afterwards aside? The Great Gooball Library is next. Googly, great Googly Moogly. Uh, the pools are fine. They're fun even. They could be big, they could be small, and they still be interesting. Uh, first boss. That catches people off guard the first time. But also it's kind of obvious to me, but also I'm me so it's like oh the boss lets us go behind it now we should go behind it so that's fine um uh second boss is oh the gale cutter guy i don't like the pace breaking of the ads they're kind of annoying and people tend not to know how the flames work and waste a lot of time even when it's like oh bring the flame to the boss they just run around for like 10 minutes before they actually get to the boss. It's pace breaking a lot. But then the final section makes up for it and the final boss is actually really fun. Getting people to actually split up correctly for the panels can also be rough. And getting people to place the orbs in the right spot is rough. But I do like the mechanics and all that. It's fun. So I think I'm going to put it as top of the B. I wouldn't say it's amazing or anything. I love the music. I love the atmosphere. Okay, now, taking that into account, it does actually deserve the A. Uh, above Stone Vigil. Below Bray Flocks. But not above Temple of Karn. Hard. And then, here's another dungeon I did a lot. The Aetherochemical Research Facility... Got so many runs in. Before Great Gooball Hard came out, this was the dungeon you did for tomes. You would do this dungeon for 150 tomes a pop. You would do this dungeon over and over and over and over for the relic. This was the grind spot for po Poetics. And it was... People, for the most part, got it on lock. Uh, there is some slow points... With, like, especially the, the final section can get kind of slow with the pools. And, like, oh, you have three enemies. That's the threshold for AoE. 
the enemies are all spaced apart so you can't AoE. So, never mind. But other than that, the, the, all the bosses are, I like. The first boss against Regulus is... Uh, is fun. It's He jumps around a lot and it's like, Oh hey, go kill the ads. Don't worry about me, go kill the ads. But once you learn that you could just ignore them, it's also funny. It's like, I'm being annoying because you have to go kill my bot. Why aren't you killing my bot? You're supposed to be killing my bot. Roar! And then, uh... The second boss is the transforming thing. It has the safety donut. It's like the only use of the safety donut in the entire game that I know of. That... Yeah, is it? Is it actually? In like dungeons and normal content, I think that's the only use of the safety donut. And then... The final boss is... Are both both phases are really interesting, especially when you know what you're doing, and you don't have like a healer who's like super panicked and like, oh my god, why is this guy standing in the AOEs? I'm standing in the AOEs because they barely hurt, and I'm gonna kill the boss before you need to heal me. And the ice floor is annoying to deal with. Okay, the uh, the ice floor in that bot in the the twin Ashians fight is kind of annoying, but Ashian Prime. Really good fight. Really, I like universal manipulation even because it's like, oh, this is super obvious. Everyone pre-positioned to get in portals and then everyone gets a portal. It's, the portals take a bit slow. It's like the bubbles in the the Dole Breaker uh, worm fight, but it's like, eh. I like it. I, I'm going to put it... Um... I'm actually going to put it in S. It's the worst of the S tier, but yeah. And so you probably, and also you probably, you probably, you probably notice right now that, uh, this is, this is, this, this one called Never Reap here. It's, it's called Never Reap and it's been sitting there the entire time. Never Reap. Yeah, worst dungeon in the entire game. The pool, you have, the first thing you do is get the eggs. And the moment after you get the eggs, you use one of the eggs. Before you've even gotten into a fight, you've interacted with two things that ju that are just... Why? Why Why is this here? Why not just immediately start us on the island? Then you have the first island's alright. There's the tornadoes in the way, but it's alright. You get everything together, you AoE it down. Second island, the tornadoes are so much in the way. They are so annoying. Then you get to the first boss, who will disappear and waste your time so much. He can appear randomly across the entire edge of the arena, and you have to find him. So you have to spread out and find him, and then you all have to go to where he appeared. And it's just slow, and kill the shade, and it's slow and dumb, and then you kill the boss, and you don't feel like you accomplished anything. Then you get into the second section. Oh look, bees! Everyone loves bees. Don't 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 they? They love the the wasps that final sting and one shot the tank. That's great, isn't it? Hope you got a paladin or a dark knight, who know or I guess even I guess ain't even a warrior could do it. I guess because but they'd have to really time it good because they only have six second window, and. It's, uh, the bees are really annoying in that section. And then you get to the second boss, who keeps summoning the totems, and you have to go pick up the totems and keep moving them around. And then by the end of the fight, there's like 10 totems littering the entire... No, it's like 12 totems littering the entire field. And it's it's a waste of time. That And if you don't get all the totems out of wherever he's spawning it, you're going to have to kill those before you can kill the boss again. And it's just, once again, wasting your time. The final section of enemies is okay. Some fun big pools in there. Got some giraffes. And then the final boss is also terrible. It slowly gets evasion stacks. So you can randomly lose your combo just randomly, you can just lose your combo. That's it. No, no, you can't do anything about it. You just lost your combo. Just, like, I'm doing everything right. I didn't do anything wrong, but I lost my combo because the boss said so. And that's so annoying. 
and then it goes into an ad phase where it just runs around getting in the way and also spawns tornadoes that get in the way while you kill the ads and then it does this giant knockback that can knock you off the arena and kill you instantly and then if you if you got enough people to fall off you have to do it all over and if you know the knockback is coming it's non-threatening completely the only threat is if you're a newbie and don't know it's a knockback and it I, I, I hate everything about Never Reap. Absolutely, I, I would prefer Zamile Dark Hold every time. Every single time. If I had to choose a lifetime of Zamile Dark Hold or a lifetime of Never Reap, I can at least find some fun in Zamile Dark Hold. At least with the doing the wall to wall in the first section with a good healer. I could pull like 20 enemies at once, and that that's, that's a little bit of fun. Never Reap, I can't find it any fun in this entire dungeon i there's the, the last sections are right but th it's all right that's no even the mile dark cold has more on it never reap is the worst dungeon of the entire game and then in the same patch the same patch that we had never reap in expert roulette we also had the fractal continuum in expert roulette I'm pretty sure this is my favorite dungeon of the entire game. So I'm putting that in the number one slot. I love all the bosses. The only negative thing I could possibly say bad about this dungeon is the final section is too big. The giant platforms that you have to defeat the enemies to activate the lift or whatever. To like activate the three panels those are huge they're, they're a bit too big but also it's trying to fit into the theme of the area and it's like an actual like prison kind of thing or create the prison or the holding whatever it's trying to, i'm i'm flopping my words i'm an hour and a half in even if this doesn't come out to an hour and a half after editing this is an hour 36 in so my words are bad but like it's that's the worst I can say about it is that the between the pools in the final section is too big. It looks amazing. The the bosses are amazing. I love that first boss. The dealing with the rapid severs and the AoEs. Positioning as a dragoon in that fight. It's like a dream of fun. It's it's so fun. And then when you know how to do when you know the strat, like when you get a good team for that second boss, it, oh my god, you know you have a good team when that second boss goes well. Because you, your healer knows the perfect timing to get the ad spawn before everyone dies from the, the 1111 ton swing. And then you kill the ad at the perfect last moment before it eats it and gets the buff and heal. And it's like, a perfect run of any other boss up to this point is it feels good it's great but a perfect run of that second boss and fractal is oh my god amazing and then the curator fight is also really cool like the only the bad part about that is if you get a healer who doesn't know how to use Esuna you get a healer that knows how to use Esuna everything about that fight is great too the the ads that spawn to slowly block block off the area and then like the plus symbol of blocks that get put in the way if the tank knows how to pr place the boss in any like good way you always have uptime no matter what happens but you still have to react to whatever what happens wherever the ad spawn wherever the mine spawn whoever has the bomb debuff that the healer has to estimate it's yeah, I, I, I can't... I, I love this dungeon. It is so great. Best dungeon in the game. Hands down. Off of that, we have St. Saint Mokians, Mochians, Mosians, Arboretum. I don't know how to say that. Um, Good dungeon. The, the, the first boss is... I don't remember 
anything about it. I'm pretty sure it's like a big turtle. Is it a big turtle? I think it's a big turtle and it does say a wheeze around it. I don't remember. Yeah, no, I, I don't remember. At least the sec- the, like, it all looks pretty, because it's an arboretum, it better look pretty, but like... I can't remember the second boss at all. And then you get the B section. That- I, that looks really cool. I love the B section. And breaking through the walls seems like it would be a huge pace breaker, but it actually manages to keep the pace going instead of breaking it. Especially if you have an experienced party. It's... It's strangely good. And then, uh, the, the, the second boss is the bee queen. That's a good test of awareness. I like when a, a fight can be a good test of awareness and the bee queen does do that. The ad phase can be a bit dumb. If you get the ad phase, I'm pretty sure you can skip it now. I think I can't, I can't remember. It's been a long time since I've done this dungeon, but like it's, it's interesting at least. And you have to watch where the bees go to properly dodge the AoEs because they're not all casted. Some of them are, don't have a cast bar or anything. They just go off. So you have to watch. You have to watch the edges of the arena while still keeping things going. Uh, and then the final boss. I mean, it it looks like a lot happens, but it's kind of boring. Final boss is kind of really boring. The path up to it's also kind of boring. It's the third section of the Arboretum is kind of the, the worst part. You kill the bee and then it goes downhill. So I'm, I'm actually going to put this in the bee area. And not just because it has bees in it. There's also, there are also wasps. Are they wasps? I think they're wasps. Yeah, it has wasps. So it's not even bee. It's not bee for bee. It's bee for wasp. Uh, I think... I can't even remember the first boss, so I can't rate it too high. So I think I'm going to put it bottom of B. It's about average. I wouldn't call it bad, but I wouldn't call it good either. Pharaoh Serious Hard is a lot better than normal Fairy Serious. Uh, the first boss is really interesting. I like what it was trying to do, but also it can get messy very quickly if people don't know what they're doing. It's not like other bosses where it's like, eh, the, it's a bit more annoying to deal with if people don't know what they're doing, but it's still doable. This is a boss that's like, oh, things get really messy if people don't know what they're doing. With the, putting the, the tethers on the random enemies in the edges of the arena. Uh, second boss is kind of annoying, actually. Yeah, I, I did say the second boss is kind of annoying. It's fun. But also it has some really annoying mechanics of like dealing with the ads. Like you have the 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 cobalt engine drill thingies that those are annoying. And then he keeps spawning leaks in the ground that you have to cover cover with the the, 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 blah, blah. the slimes. The slimes are kind of annoying too. It's like Okay, whatever, game. Whatever. Just move on already. You're taking too long. This boss it, it's another boss that feels a lot longer than it is. And then the final boss, or the, the path up to the final boss is really annoying because it's like, oh, it's a DPS race, but also it's hard to tell if you're beating the DPS race. You have to kill the bomb generators while also dealing with a large pool of enemies. And if you don't, you get more enemies and it's like, if you're not fast, it's something that goes downhill extremely quickly. So again, it's like, if your party doesn't already know what's up, it can go downhill very quickly. And it's like, punishment is one thing, but it's it's punishment in a bad way. I don't know, I'm, I'm just not, eh. I'm gonna rate it in the C. I'm, it's better... But you're comparing it to normal fair or serious. So I'm going to put it... Mid C. 
see. I'd prefer it over Dusk Vigil, but it's still a bit... There's a lot of rough parts for this place. Yeah. Anti-Tower, though, that's at least going to get into the A. That at least deserves somewhere in the A tier. Uh... T -t 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 -t. Um, I'm actually going to put it just under Brayflock's hard cuz the first the first section's pool kind of the the limiting it's kind of limiting and boring i don't like the first section but then the first boss is front fun getting turned into a frog's not all that fun cuz you're just dodging aoe's over and over and you can't you can't dps and dodge you just have to dot just bam just dot you just keep moving keep moving and it's like it's not even interesting to deal with but then the second boss is also very easy like even if you just basically ignore mechanics except for kill ads it doesn't really do anything the second section like the entire dungeon actually looks really cool so the flavor definitely carries this dungeon the flavor definitely carries it the second boss is kind of easy, though. Like I said, it's... Eh. But then the upside-down castle part... Like, the pools in the second part are really fun to do. Especially the big ones. And then the pools in the sec the final part are also really fun to do. And then Cal Cabrina comes up. Like, oh my... I did not expect Cal Cabrina. And then... I... I... I kind of upset that they didn't make it like the actual Cal Cabrina fight. Where if you kill off all of the dolls at the same time there is no phase two it just ends that would have been funny but i guess that's also technically a bug and not a feature but like ha imagine what that would how that would have been that would have been cool if that was a feature that you could just skip cal cabrina but you can't but other than brace which is like why are you why are you doing i guess and I, I, I don't know why it's doing Brace. Like, Brace is like, oh, just stand in front of it and do a bunch of damage. Or you get reflected. At least in Ravana, he kind of had a reason to be doing it. And it was just stand to the sides or right behind it. And not right in front of it, where you're probably not going to be. Make Making you go in front of a boss where you normally shouldn't go in front of bosses is kind of dumb. And then also there's the the gaze attack that's targeted at a person. That catches a lot of people off guard, but I like that mechanic. I like that mechanic. It's a it's a good kind of off guard. So it's like it's a high A, but I admit that it's mostly the looks. It's like it's a really cool looking dungeon. And Calcabrina is also a fun fight. But I I I, I eh. Below Total Rack. That's probably going to make some people angry. Also making people angry is the Lost City of Amdapur Hard. This is another one that I really like a lot. Uh, big pools are really fun. Okay, quickly readjusted everything just because everything was starting to go off and I didn't want to completely cut off everything. Now you also get a preview again of what's coming up. But, uh... Eh... No, uh, yeah, why am I saying eh? I really like this dungeon. The the bosses are all neat, and it's also a preview into Shadowbringers. Just because, oh, we dealt, we've we dealt with Void Scent. Now what happens when an area gets corrupted with light? And this is the same place. This is where Diablos was, but now it's corrupted with light. And you fight light-based enemies. The Also, the, the replacement for the, the, the giant winged moth thing in this dungeon i like that boss to it it's a lot of it's another one of those where it's like oh if you don't know what the boss is doing you're going to like kill people and it's kind of unfair about that in a way but then once you know what you're doing it's like oh just turn away okay and then it can get pretty fun there's some good aoe dodging in there it's, it's all right but then second boss it's a bit annoying with the way the, the ad phases work a little bit, but it also that's it's still fun. 
Dealing with the, the arrows and the stones and the debuffs that the stone people have to take the arrows and the arrow people have to take the stones. Some people just take all the debuffs anyway, but the fact that you could just mix and match the debuffs and take very little damage, that's cool. I really like that part. And then the final boss, it's like, oh, it has really short phases, but like, oh, phase one, it dies really quickly. Phase two, it dies less quickly, but now it's trying to heal itself and also use regen, or it uses regens, regens that now hurt you. And then phase three, no, I think it's phase two, it uses regen, and then phase three, regens that hurt you and heals that hurt you. And you have to stack up for cure four so that it doesn't heal itself. And it's like... It, it's so clever of a fight. It's a really clever fight. It really makes you think about what was going through their minds when they made that fight. It's real. It, it's, it's really... At least I think so. I think it's really clever. So I'm actually going to rate the... the where is it? Lost City of Amdapur Hard... I'm going to put it below Arf. It's below Arf, but it's still a really good dungeon. It does get boring to look at after a couple runs, and the final section's kind of boring to run through over and over, and the, the pulls aren't interesting. Small or big, and I don't think you can even pull big there. It's kind of boring. Sor Kai is next. Sor Kai is... The... The sleeping stones are really weird. The fans giving you the speed buff is really weird. It's really weird. And then the Moogle boss, the Moogle boss is actually kind of fun. Dealing with the Moogles can be really interesting. And depending on the pattern you get or the group you get, it can be extremely fun to go through. If you get a group that just randomly spams attacks, it can get rough again. But Moogle can be fun. Second area, the egg hatching can get rough. You can only ever kill like one or two eggs, so it's like, why not just have them hatched to begin with? And then the pony boss is like, dealing with the walls and what it's doing. I, I, I like the pony boss. It You have to properly place the AoEs. But you can, and it's, it's another one where you can really make things go downhill. But there's a lot of leeway in, in it still. There's a, you have to really mess up to break all of the walls. It can be pretty annoying with how much the boss moves when it does the dashes, but also uh, it's not completely awful. It's not like, oh my god, the boss keeps moving. This is terrible, but it's it almost breaks the pace, but doesn't. Like, the actual trash pulls of the final section are more pace-breaking than the actual second boss's dashes. And then Race Felger as a fight, I actually really like this fight. It can get kind of, like, four-dimensional chessy with how the platforms connect when she starts to- or when he starts taking them out. But it's like, it's still fun and you have to break the holy uh, ads to get lots of LB and you get- you can get, like, LB1 and LB2 off on him if you get all the holy things. Though I think power creep changes that, that you only ever get LB2 and that's it. But it's... It's cool. Dealing with the Morna Faz is also kind of cool. Or it's not Morna Fa, it's the... Ock Rise, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Ock Rise. The, the pulsing light beams that aren't Ock Morns. So I'm actually going to say, I'm actually going to leave it there. Low A rank, I'd say. Low A rank. I like, I like all the bosses. It doesn't look all too interesting. It just looks like the mists, but clear. The final area looks nice with the sunset, though. And yeah, good bosses. Looks boring until the final area, but then the final area is also bad pool, so it's like... And some weird decisions with the enemies in the first part. The first two parts. Besides just, oh, you can pull big, but weird enemy choices. And then we have... 
uh, Dual Breaker Hard. I should have had an extra layer for just Dual Breaker, because Dual Breaker Hard is also bad. The first boss is just a bunch of trash mobs, and they're not even interesting trash mobs. The second boss is Welk from FF6, and it has some annoying mechanics with ice and sliding around and placing AoEs in proper spots that people can ri you can get killed just because one person didn't understand the placements. And then the final boss is interesting. I do like the final boss. It's one of the few places where you could actually elusive jump as a Dragoon and actually use it for the the old debuff cleansing. It used, I, I can't remember if it still does it, but elusive jump would cleanse, bind, and the boss binds you and you need Asuna to survive or you just die. I, I think you can actually survive with a, like a shield or something, but you take a lot of damage or just outright die. But as a Dragoon, you don't need the healer. You could just elusive jump. But otherwise, like, all the fights in this dungeon, all the enemy fights are boring. There's not a... I can't, I can't even remember the second section of the bots... Uh, the, of, the, of the dungeon. I, I can't even remember what goes on in there besides you fight Welk at the end. And then the third section you fight the lieutenants and all that. And that's kind of interesting, but it's like... <sighs> Do I put it below the mild or cold? Do I put it below the original Dole Breaker? Is it better or worse? Final boss is good. Welk is good. Monkey sucked. Worm was okay. I think I put this slightly above Hole Breaker. Do I put Dole Breaker above Sestasha hard though? Y yes. Still an F. Definitely still an F. What isn't an F though is Zelfatol. Zelfatol is a pretty decent dungeon. It has very unique mechanics dealing with wind. Like, it's one of the few times a dungeon takes an element and goes full hog wild with uh, mechanics of that element. The first boss uses wind as a way to escape the field, and then you have to use wind to get him back off or back onto the field. Second boss uses wind as a knockback and a way to reduce the amount of space you have to use in the arena. Like, oh, this guy got targeted with an AO a tornado that's going to block off one of the safety platforms. You now only have three safety platforms to use, but you still have three safety platforms. But he's using it as a knockback and not just, oh, yeah, wind attack. And then the final boss is using wind attacks and summoning Garuda. And it's like, oh, you have to deal with a bunch of Garuda mechanics. And, and proper placing from the tanks is really good. Uh, some of the the pools are kind of annoying. The, the, sec the last pool before the second boss is probably like my least favorite pool of the dungeon. Just because it involves some ranged enemies and the bridge and it can be hard to group everything together. Even for an experienced tank, it can be really hard to group all those enemies together. Otherwise, uh, DPS check to stop the enemies from spawning from the, the, the airships. That's kind of cool that you can be rewarded for really good DPS. But it's otherwise almost impossible to. So it's like, if you did it, you had a really good DPS. So I, I like that. Uh, yeah, I, I, I like I like Zofatol. It's definitely an A at minimum. Actually, let's put low S. Low S, yeah, definitely low S. S minus. Great Gobal Library Hard is... The speedrun dungeon. If you wanted a short dungeon, you did Great Gooball Har Library hard, and this is what became where you started farming for tombstones. It was only 100, I'm pretty sure, but you could do it in like half the time, so you could get in two runs and get in the time it took to do one arf, and so you would get an extra 50 tomes for the same amount of time, but also arguably even less effort. Which also can be a point against it, but I'm not sure it's a 
for or against it. Uh, first boss, I like how it's a surprise. You think it's just going to be another giant tome, but then the boss breaks out of the tome and starts slashing at the tank, and it's like, oh, you got me, you got me. Also, the music. I think I like this. I can't I can't think if I like original Gubal music more or this music, because they're both trying to be, like, all jazzy, but in their own ways. Uh, the pools are more fun in the second section of Gubal Hard than Gubal Original, so that's a big step up. I like the Fire Pepsi Man fight. It, it's basically just Ifrit and a a, uh, a distance tether that you could just ignore. You could just stand in melee range and take the full damage and not even be in danger. The hand phase is kind of annoying just because the witch panels are safe is random. Um, and then the, 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 the owl boss, I really, I like the owl boss and using the, the different tomes and then it's just summons a behemoth out of nowhere. Like, hey, I'm summoning a behemoth. Enjoy the behemoth. So it's like, it's a fast dungeon. Second boss, I would say is the low point. I think it goes through more evolutions of visual than it does than the original Gubal. It has better books. I like that they give like lore reasons for why you don't have Kier 1, Kier 2, Kier 3, Kier 4. And it's not Kiraga, Kiraja. They give a lore reason for that. They explain Garlean titles. I think that's in hard. The books are better in hard than in normal. So yeah, it's definitely above the original. Definitely above the original. Where did I put the original anyway? I already forgot where I put the original. Great cool ball. Ah, but it, high. They put it in the low A. This is definitely a high A. I think I put it above Brave Locks hard, but below the vault. It's definitely not as fun as the vault. But it's still a good time, and it's fast at least. Bear Souls, Bear Souls Wall, uh, slop a for Alamigo. Some of the pools suck. Some of the pools suck. But like the entire second section, despite it being a single platform that keeps moving, it still is an interesting section. I actually don't hate it. Uh, the first section is kind of annoying with so how some of the pools work. It's doable to do big pulls there, but also, uh, yeah. More tanks mess it up than they succeed. It also involves one of the rare times that the DPS have to be pulling too, just because they get targeted with the tethers. Uh, I like all the bosses. Dealing with the, the, the acceleration bomb is actually fun, though it seems like that acceleration bomb is less lenient than it should be. The extreme caution. But I do like all the, all the bosses. I think the only weird point is that in the Ilbert fight that he changed up the healer to kill them or whatever. And I think that's like the weirdest it gets. Rather, I, think, I really like Basol's Wall. Thinking on it, it's like I always thought about it. It's like, oh, I, I don't like Basol's Wall. That one's kind of hard. I don't want to put in effort. The pools in the first area are hard. The second area is an elevator. But no, actually, I, I, thinking more on it, I like Basil as well. I'm gonna keep it in A. Yeah. Yeah, right below the vault, but still above Gubal Library Hard. And then we have Some All Hard, the final dungeon of Heaven's Word, the final expert dungeon that came out, the reverse of Some All. This one is a lot more interesting than the original Some All. It still has some weird pulls, but like, before uh, uh, gear and all that completely broke it, the first and second bosses actually survived and did a lot more mechanics. Now they just like melt. I, I don't even know what happened. 
they used to like have huge HP pools, even with good DPS. You had good DPS, and they would last a while. But now it's like, oh, they melt after like one cycle of mechanics for the first and second boss, and only the final boss has any sort of meat still on it, and even he's super short. So it's like, I don't this. It's a dungeon that definitely didn't stand the test of time. So all hard did not stand the test of time. But I did I did greatly enjoy it though. Back in the day at least. Now it doesn't really hold up just because first and second boss kinda just melt. They the worms break before the second boss, it kinda dumb. The giant choo choos or whatever they are from Final Fantasy 13 are too big. Could have been like a little teeny bit smaller. I do like having to deal with the random plant placements for the plant boss. It could... You had to... Uh, how can I explain it? You had to position yourself... You had to really react to what you were given. And I remember running it as a black mage and being like, Oh, I have to move a lot for this fight. But I don't hate moving a lot in this fight, which is weird. Because black mage doesn't want to be moving, but I didn't hate it. Second boss, I loved the rage mechanic that just completely changed how all of his mechanics work. Oh, he does a frontal claw attack. That's just a normal attack that you take the damage of. Now it's an attack you have to dodge, and it also leaves behind a tornado. Uh, now the flamethrower used to be there. It was the fireball. Now it's a flamethrower. The dash used to be a small dash. Now it's a huge dash. So it's like the rage mechanic is cool, and then the path up to the sil the scorpion is meh. Once again, enemies that are way too big, the weird way it's broken up, the spacing of the enemies, uh, and then the final boss itself is like people really overreact to some of the things that happen in that fight. Like oh. I'm being targeted for an AoE. Let me run 50 million miles away. And it's like, why are you running so far away? You're ruining my uptime. What are you doing? C come back, come back. Why are you across the entire arena? Come back. Uh, but it's otherwise a good fight. So I think I'm going to put this in A as well. I'm going to put it... Right below Anti-Tower, th I'd say. Yeah, right below Anti-Tower. Yeah. Okay, and that, that's, that's how it's looking for how things are after Heaven's Word. So we got... It's still about even for good and bad. We had my favorite dungeon in the game in there. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 below Sestasha if we keep Sestasha as an average. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28 above Sestasha. So we are really in favor of good dungeons. And then I think it, with he, with Stormblood is when they really got into like, okay, every dungeon from now on is going to be quality because they stopped doing quantity and started doing quality. People complain about getting less dungeons, but also they ignore that uh, they're all really good. I'm pretty sure, I'm, I, I can't just say right now, but I'm pretty sure every dungeon from this point forward is going to be above Sustash. I don't think I remember hating any other dungeon. So let, let's let's just get into it. Let's get into the the Stormblood dungeons.